Well, praise the Lord. I'm so glad to be here today at Full of Grace Ministries to bring you the Word of God. And it's such a great honor for John and Trish to invite me to speak and bring you the Word. And I give honor to them, and I give honor to their team that works with them and labors with them daily and bringing uh, forth the, the ministry that they somehow will touch and bless others. And I know it's a blessing to many others. It's been a blessing to me over the years, and I thank them for this opportunity. And my message today is glory to glory. God has a threefold presence, and He desires to have a personal presence with people. The first Adam had the personal presence of God. He was filled with the breath, Holy Spirit of God, and experienced God walking and talking to him in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 2 and 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Hallelujah. Genesis 3 and 8, And they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the tree of the garden. Hallelujah. Here we see God walking and dwelling with Adam. Surely we must say this was the ideal place for God to dwell with us. Man fell and lost the personal presence of God in the way God intended and was a, uh, banished from the garden. God who created man has ever since wanted to dwell with man. God didn't want us to fail, but man failed because of sin that come into the life. When we have God living in us, uh, we can breathe the breath of the Holy Spirit in us too, that we can strive daily to be better and better and better. The Bible says pray without ceasing, to move in the Spirit. And as we go about our daily chores, no matter what we do, what we say, when we're breathing a prayer and we got a prayer upon our mind and breath all the time, we're less likely to fall short of the grace of God. Hallelujah. But man failed. God's desire was for uh, Exodus 25, 8, to make me a sanctuary that I may dwell with them. Israel was to be a dwelling uh, or a house of God. <coughs> he intended for Israel to be a house of God. The reason for the temple is dwelling. God knew that God's dwelling in him because the breath was blown in the nose and he could hear it when he breathed. God breathed in Adam life and he came a living being. And when the Holy Ghost, we don't live to the Holy Spirit comes within us and we begin to breathe uh, out to what God has in us. Uh, and when we walk like God, talk like a uh, God, we're going to have that Holy Spirit working in us at all times. Ecclesiastics 1 and 9. The things that has bent is that that we shall be and that which is done, that which shall be done, and there is no new things under the sun. Hallelujah. God's presence, according to the ancient times, is confident, uh, confined to the tabernacle sanctuary and to others serving as a vehicle of God. God wants you to uh, praise Him. God wants you to do His work. God wants you to win souls. Hallelujah. That is our mission of today. Look. Of Second Samuel 7, 6 and 7, I will establish my abode in your midst, and I will be moving about, be presence in your midst. I will be your God, and you shall be my people. That says it all right there. We are his people. Hallelujah. Leviticus 26, 11 and 12, and Exodus 25 and 8, let them be a sanctuary 
that I may uh, dwell among them. And the end of the inauguration of the tabernacle in. There came an end to the tabernacle. Uh, Exodus 29, 45, 46. And I will dwell among the Israelites, and I will be their God, just like he's our God today. He was their God. Before giving the law, God explained that the children of Israel were to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Hallelujah. Their mission was to show the rest of the society what it meant to integrate God into a lifestyle. Just like today, we live under grace. We have to integrate God into our lifestyle. It doesn't happen without you inviting Him into your life and walk like Him, talk like Him. It was intended that God, uh, the children of Israel will accomplish their mission. We got a mission today that we got to accomplish. We all called. We are called a According to his purpose. It was God's original intent that every single Jew should obtain a level of understanding and equal to the high priest as he entered the holies of holies to serve God and effect forgiveness. Uh, we are forgiven today. We don't have to go through the same thing that they went through in the Old Testament uh, to get forgiveness. If we mess up, if we do something wrong, if we sin against God, uh, all we have to say is, Father, forgive me. Forgive me. I am so sorry for what I did. Will you please forgive me? And he's just and faithful to forgive you at that moment, and he remembers it no more. Hallelujah. God made a stipulation with the Israelites who are yet in Israel, that he would only bring them out from there on the understanding that they would build a tabernacle for him so that he might cause his presence to dwell among them. And it said that they should know, I am the Lord their God, and brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and I will dwell among them. Exodus twenty nine forty six on this condition, that I may dwell among them. Now as soon as the tabernacle was erected, the descendants dwell in their midst. All the conditions were fulfilled. Hallelujah. It said, and it come to pass, implying that what we had promised, he performed. Whatever he tells you, whatever he promised you, he is a God that cannot lie. He, and if he promised you to do something in your life, he is going to do it. If anybody ever give you a word from the Lord, and it was a a word direct from God, it will come to pass. You may sometimes have to wait a little bit. You don't have to take it right then. If you're not sure about that word, put it on a shelf and say, God, I'm saving this at your point in time. And if it's for this word to come about in my life, you will perform it. Hallelujah. I was giving a, a word from a lady one time. She told me that that I was going to be heard all through the world on television. And at that time, I could not see that ever happening because I know that television time is really expensive and very few people can afford it in these days and in this time we're living in now. So I kept that word. I kept that word in my heart. And it was several years later that she came back through our church. She gave me the exact same word that she had spoken the first time. And she said, you will be heard throughout the world. Again, I didn't see how that was possible. But you know what? It wasn't too long after that to somebody introduced me to a Sing Snap. And I'm not a great singer, but I began to work with it, and uh, and God led me into a ministry there. And when you're on the Internet, you're going out through the world. Hallelujah. So that word was made come 
to pass in my life. And I thank God, and I have been all over the world through Sing Sap Ministry, preaching the Word of God and, and ministering to many people. And, and God, give me that opportunity, and I thank Him. I have traveled a little bit in my time. I've been to some places, and, and, and I thank God for that time that He has sent me places ministering and preaching the Word of God. And, and I've been preaching and traveling. I traveled and evangelized for 25 years, uh, and I pastored a short time, three and a half years. Uh, and but God has really been um, alive in my life, and there's been times I fall short, but there's times I get back up and go again. Sometimes we get to low places in our life. Sometimes we don't know what direction to take or what God is leading you into. Sometimes you might think you want to go to one way, but God is saying, I want you to go this way. Uh, and when we put it in God's hands and wait on Him and know without a doubt it is Him speaking to us in His directions, and when we move, when He says move, and you know without a doubt that it is Him speaking. I thought well, uh, when I ended my ministry a few months ago, I thought my time had passed uh, because I, I have a, a handicapped husband and, and, and there's times that he did, uh, requires a lot of my time and, and I don't get to travel like I did preaching one time and I don't get to go to different places even with our church I can't go and travel much with them anymore but I thank God when the opportunity to arise for you to speak the word of God God will make a way for you and it don't matter what you're doing he will say I will perform it now, all you have to do is be obedient to him and once you obedient to him he's going to make a way for you to do whatever he wants you to do hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah here then is the mission of jesus to bring man to the place of personal presence we see that his life is the picture of god restoring himself to the life in the man and the goal uh goal of revealing himself to the world through those who receive him see god comes in in you and he wants to to you to carry his message he wants you to go he wants you to teach the uh, the new uh, converts and the new christians how to walk from glory to glory you know when i got saved uh, I wanted to desire to, I wanted to be more like him. I wanted all that he had for me, glory to God. I wanted him to be so real in my life. Uh, and I gave myself to him and I, I, uh, people would try to help me get to the place I need or, or encourage me to get to the place I need. And they say, let go and let God, hallelujah. Let go and let God. You don't know how bad I wanted to let let go and let God come in there and do it for me or tell me what to do or to instruct me. Uh, but you know, it took me that I would get so flustered. Okay, I want to let go and let God, but how do I do it? Nobody explained to me how to let go and let God do it. But praise God, one day I was uh, seeking Him and and he says, just give it to me and walk daily. And when he said that, I said, yes, Lord. I just let go and let God, and I didn't know how to do it, had flustered me so I was about to the point I give up. But when God spoke, said, just give it to me and walk one day at a time. And when you walk in him one day at a time, he will give it to you as you go, as you grow in him. He's going to raise you up in a new realm of the spirit to walk with him and it was such a release it was such a new place to get to I was a new Christian in God and didn't know and I was seeking all the wrong places instead of seeking to God I was going for people for help and, and all I really needed to do was just give it to him and go to him and take it one day at a time and let him rise up into me and do what he needed to do hallelujah now we have to be like jesus we have to pattern 
ourselves after Jesus. First Corinthians 15, 45 and 47, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last man, Adam, became a life giving spirit hallelujah however the spirit is not first but the natural and the afterwards the spiritual the man was the first man was of the earth made of dust the second man of the lord is from heaven hallelujah Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Luke 1, 35, And the angels answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One, who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Hallelujah. Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit. You must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Luke 3, 31, 22, When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heavens was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in his bodily form like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hallelujah and if God lives in you today he wants you we want you should he should be pleased with your works that you do for him hallelujah glory to God Jesus was led by the Holy Ghost Holy Spirit Luke 4, 1, and 14. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and the news of him went out through the land and all surrounded the region. When you're filled with the Spirit, you let you let that flow, then others will know who you belong to. Glory to God. And when we begin to move in God's grace and God's glory and let that glory be changed from glory to glory within us. Uh, Je Jesus' disciple uh, displayed the kingdom of God. Luke 4 and 18 and 19, the Spirit of the Lord is up on me. You'll know it when the Spirit of the Lord comes up on you. You can't contain yourself sometimes. I, oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Because He has anointed me to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Praise God when the, you got the gifts working in you. Jesus is the same today forever. When he walked on this earth and he went about doing miracles, signs and wonders follow him. Praise God, the signs and wonders should be following today as we preach the gospel. We should be laying hands on people. The, we should see them of the, the cancers healed. Uh, we should see blinded eyes open. Uh, we should see the crippled, the lame walking. Uh, that's so uh, we got the, uh, he, Jesus said in the latter days we should, we should do greater works than him and if we do greater works we have these same things working in us so we have to rise up in that and believe by faith it shall be done hallelujah glory to god hallelujah jesus said man as the dwelling place of god he sacrificed an atonement redeemed man reverts back to the original design of god seen in adam restored in the second Adam. We are the second Adam. We are of the Holy Spirit. We are walking in grace today and not in the law. Hallelujah. 
the law has been fulfilled and and Jesus come to redeem us uh, and to pay for our sins that we could have life abundantly we could uh, rise up in him and I thank him today that he's uh, Jesus said man as a dwelling place through his sacrifice and I want to sacrifice myself I want to give myself daily to him uh, glory to God I want to be all that I re- John 20, 20 said, and when he said, he breathed on them, and he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, receive the Holy Spirit, and I thank God today that we have that same spirit working in us, that Jesus received at the river of Jordan, hallelujah, and one of the greatest spirits I had in my lifetime was being able to go to Israel and being baptized right where Jesus was baptized, uh, and I never will forget that to this day, that that experience to be baptized where Jesus was baptized. I walked where Jesus walked. Uh, and, and I'm walking today with Jesus every day of my life. I might not be walking where he walked then, but I'm walking in the way of his way that he would have me to go. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. First Corinthians 19. Or do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Who is in you? Whom you have from God and you are not your own. You're bought with a price. You're not your own. You don't have no life of your own. You belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus showed us how life has been and was intended to live. The church walks in divine state and should be displaying God's hence. Nothing less than his presence will be sufficient. Now in understanding the truth We realize within that we know as church, we have substitute many things for his presence. If we truly walk in his presence, then there is no argument or discussion of reality of God. How do we get there? Simply by cultivating a present lifestyle. When you love Jesus, you'll walk with him daily. You'll walk in that lifestyle. Hallelujah. You'll walk in his way, in his lifestyle. And when you walk in that lifestyle, the Christian is a living, breathing temple of the Almighty God. When you get saved, God moves in. Salvation is about getting man into heaven. It's about getting God into man. It's about making dead men alive. The house of God and corporate church, Psalms 127, 1 and 5, unless the Lord build the house, they, the labor is in vain who builds it, but shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Unless God builds a house. I want God to build a house in me. Genesis twenty eight sixteen. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Hallelujah. The house of God refers simply to the dwelling place of God. The gates to heaven is the place where heaven comes to earth. This is the individual corporation gathering, a place where heaven is open, where separated us from other people on the earth, the presence of God. Should we not then seek him? Those who encounter God's understanding the desire to Moses in exited and Moses said unto the Lord, You say to me, Bring up thy people, but you let not let them know who you will send with me. Yet you said, I know you by my name and have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have formed grace in your sight, show me your way. I want to say, Lord, show me your way. Show me your way. I want to walk in your way. Hallelujah. Exodus 
33 is desire for God to show me his glory. Should we be any less desiring what the church needs is God to face without uh, what the church needs is to in fact with uh, God in fact without God we have nothing that is true without God I am nothing I tell God that a lot I say God without you I am nothing without your Holy Spirit working in me I am nothing without your anointing I am nothing hallelujah Second Corinthians three seventeen. now the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty but we all with the unveiling face beholding as a mirror of the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. To understand this truth, truth of becoming more glorious in the Lord and therefore displaying the kingdom of God to others, we need to see one lacking personal dwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, the other with forever abiding presence. He has changed us. How does this happen? So let us learn from the Moses life uh, found in us. Exodus 33, 7, when you convey what it requires for the believer to experience a growing life, changing glory of God, and so become the very reflection of God to the unsaved people. Hallelujah. Exodus 33, 7, Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, and it called a tabernacle of the meeting. We today don't have a tabernacle. We have a church house that we go to. It is called the tabernacle sometimes, uh, but we have to meet God there. But do you don't have to go to the church house to meet God. You can meet him right wherever you are. It doesn't matter. Be prepared prepared to leave the camp, yet have to draw near to God by having a willingness to have the things of the world leave them behind. The things of this world behind to follow God, you have to leave them behind. Hallelujah. Be prepared to spend time with God. Have a tent of meetings, year, place to commence with God. Have you a place where you meet God daily? Be prepared daily to meet Him. Be prepared to pray. That means listening to God as well as speaking. What made Moses different from the people they watched but didn't participate? We need to develop our own relationship with God and let everyone else do it for not let everyone else do it for us. They worship from a distance. People want to own look sometimes. They don't want to move into the presence of God. Never getting too close to God. And we have that today in church houses. People, some will move in. Some will move into the anointing and the move of the God that's been the house. But then you have some that will stand back and look uh, and won't enter into the presence. God is a gentleman. He don't force you to do anything. He draws you by His Spirit, and He allows you. You have to yield to the Spirit of God to move into the things of God. They were more comfortable by the tent than the tent of God. Our test request for our lifestyle we have developed and our surroundings relate to the face of the earth. Father, we declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. Hallelujah. And the earth unites with them in a wonderful chorus of worthy praise. I want to enter into his praises to your holy name. But there should be nothing greater than your grace and your glory. No one's worthy of your wonder and praise uh, that the worship that falls from the lips of the sinners saved by grace. For you have redeemed us by your blood and clothed us in your own garments and righteous. 
You have deserve you deserve our praise and glory throughout the time and in eternal ages to come. We praise and thank you for your great and precious promises that seed time and harvest days and night, summer uh, and winter will never fail for your mercy endures forever. You make ears uh, your sun to rise on the wicked and well of those are saved and you send showers of refreshing rain on the unjust as well as the upright but there should should be a greater testimony of your loving kindness and patience endure that the grace that the opportunity to be redeemed by the blood your only forgotten son a gift of grace you are ascending to the world of fallen man, blessed and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might that be unto our God forever and ever. Don't you want to be changed from glory to glory? Hallelujah. That's what God is calling us into now. I'm telling you folks, if you don't get it right with God in these last days, you're not going to make it. You're going to have to have the strength of the Lord and the Word in you. You might lose your Bible. You might lose the Word of God. It might be taken away. But you got the Word in you. You can stand on that Word. I praise God today. I give Him praise and all the glory. And I thank you for being able to bring the Word of God today. God bless you all.